Hey everybody, I'm here today with part 3 of the 2004 Red Sox yearbook review. And we will pick up where we left off, which we left off. The last page we did was touching the mall. That's where we last left off. Now we're on Home of the Rave. Star Spangled Banner. Star Spangled Reviews flowed. There's some pictures right here. In Reach Outreach is what that description says. And now let's see what's next. We got play ball. <laughs> That's a funny statement right there. Great guess. Get the games going. Here's the pictures right here that I'm going to show. You can pause and take a look if you want. Baseball mamas, because Red Sox walk in the park. This was these photos took place on Mother's Day. The last section I looked at, I don't know what board, when it took place, but the first one I looked at took place in Game Four of the ALCS, as well as Game Three. This one took place on May 11th, which was Mother's Day. It's all the baseball mamas. The next page, the baseball papas, which this took place on Father's Day. It's a Red Sox Father's Day catch. The last one was a Red Sox walk in the park. Next one we got, three down, a Red Sox picnic in the park. It's actually a nice, Fenway Park's actually a nice place to have a picnic because it's huge. In fact, it's one, Fenway Park is actually now the oldest ballpark. It recently turned 110 years old. It's the oldest ballpark in America. Or out in the MLB, actually. It's the oldest ballpark in the MLB. Or actually, I, sorry, I messed up on my words. This is, Fenway Park is the oldest baseball park in the MLB, obviously. Second oldest baseball park is um, Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field is second oldest. Fifty years and counting. The Jimmy Fun with the Red Sox. Red Sox Nation, Boston, Community Athletic Programs. Red Sox Nation in Rhode Island. Red Sox Nation, Connecticut. Red Sox Nation, Vermont. Red Sox Nation, New Hampshire. Red Sox Nation, Maine. This was the summer caravan visited Portland that day. For Red Sox Nation, New Hampshire, the summer caravan visited Concord. Red Sox Nation, Vermont, the summer caravan visited um, Burlington. For Red Sox Nation, Connecticut, the summer caravan visited Hartford. Red Sox Nation, Rhode Island. 
the summer caravan visited Pro Providence. And the first Red Sox nation was in um, Boston, obviously. Okay, let's see where I'm on next. The Student Council, which this is the pictures of the class of 2000, Red Sox scholars, class of 2003. Hallowed confines. It was all treats, no tricks. Because <laughs> this took place on Halloween. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the princesses and the goblins love Femway's tall tales. <laughs> That's a pretty funny picture right there. These are actually pretty cool costumes. There's two people dressed up as M&Ms, which is just funny. <laughs> there's two people dressed. There's two kids dressed as ninjas. One as a knight. And these are the princesses and the goblins. So yeah, pretty interesting. And then we got a picture with pumpkins. <laughs> Cowgirl up. Holiday cheer. This of course took place during Christmas, so that's a good picture. And this was the 2003 Red Sox holiday caravan. For Calgary, let the Red Sox wives support the community. Support the community. Number 42, Remembering Jackie Robinson. Which every year on April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day. And that's where everybody wears 42 to honor Jackie Robinson. Because on April 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson made his debut in the MLB as the first African American baseball player to play in the MLB. And he was and he was one of the fastest runners. And he was one of the few who could steal home base because not many players can do that. Especially with a catcher there. And then we got the staff section. This is the front office administration legal department. So I'm not going to say all their names because most of them I'm not familiar, familiar with. Excuse me. I messed up my words there. But if you want, you can pause to take a look at the uh, pictures. Okay, this is the 2004 staff for baseball operations, medical staff, clubhouse staff, minor league operations, and scouting. As you see right here, we got a couple Red Sox legends. We got Tony, Tony Klolinger, Kloninger, Jim Rice, Luis Tian, Carl Yastrzemski, and Dana Lavangi. Got some of the legends. Some of the Red Sox legends work for the staff. Got 2004 staff of public relations, publications and archives, community relations, advertising relations. Uh, sorry, advertising and entertainment. Sorry, I didn't mean to mess that up. Fan and neighborhood service services. Again, sorry that I messed up there. <laughs> One thing I forgot to point out, in some of these pitch sections, uh, there's a section saying um, photos not taken, and it shows the members who aren't there. 
just thought I'd give a disclaimer. But anyways, um, next one is 2004 staff for sales and corporate partnership, information technology, accounting, and office administration. And then we got the last section of staff, which is, let's see, 2004 staff for ticket services and operations, Fenway Park tour guides. And then some yearbooks, they show Wally on the staff, because he is a mascot after all. And then here's a picture of the tour guides. Actually, there's more staff section. I thought that was the last, but it isn't. <laughs> Silly me. This one is the 2004 staff of Fenway Park operations, photographers, and mascots. It's mascot and sound of Fenway, which everyone knows who the mascot is for the Red Sox. It's Wally the Green Monster. Let's not forget about him, people. And like I said earlier, here he is, Wally the Green Monster. Alright, this is the Fenway, 2004 Fenway Ambassadors. Two thousand four professional scouts and amateur scouts. Two thousand four minor league player development system. Four minor league coaches and instructors, major league special assignment instructors, international scouts. And this is actually the first section in this yearbook that shows not pictured because it lists the names that are not pictured there. Of course, we got some more Red Sox legends. You got, let's see, you got Charlie Wagner, Johnny Paskey, Jim Rice. Of course, you have Luis Tiant. So, one of the Red Sox legends. And then here's the not pictured section. Which are, as I call it, the honorable mentions. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. Alright, got the Hall of Fame. It's got all of our Hall of Famers. In 19, here's the description. In 1995, the Red Sox Hall of Fame was institu instituted to recognize the outstanding careers of former Red Sox players, non uniform Red Sox purse, Red Sox personal, are also considered for special commend commendation. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And placement into the Red Sox Hall of Fame. Additionally, former Red Sox personnel who are in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown 
and who spent a significant portion of their careers with the Red Sox are also automatically unrenished. Sorry, i got to fix this page. And it gives a description of each player on the plaque. First one's Richard Paul Burleson. He played for the Red Sox from 1974 to 1980. Kenneth Robert Coleman. Tony Canigliere, which Tom Welf. He's one of the ones I'm well familiar with. He first played on the Red Sox from 1964 to 1967. Yeah, from 1964 to 1970, he was on the Red Sox. Then he went to the Angels in 1971, came back in 1975. And, of course, Tony Canigliere has a pretty sad backstory in the middle of this description, which I'm going to explain it for those who don't know. A trad, sadly, a tr sadly for the description, a tragic beaning on August 17, 1967, curtailed a promising career. At the at the time, he was hitting .287 of 20 home runs. And then in 1990, after his untimely death, the annual Tony Canigliaro National War was established in his memory. Yeah, because after Tony Canigliaro was hit by Jack Hamilton in, again, in the game against the Angels, he was never the same. Got Joseph Edward Cronin. It's Tony Canigliaro. Joseph Cronin. He, was on, he played for the Red Sox from 1935 to 1958. Dominic Paul DiMaggio. He was on the Red Sox from 1940 to 1942, then 1946 to 1953. Yeah, because cause I believe he's, cause he was one of those players that served in World War II. I believe he was. Well. So some of the Red Sox players, including Ted Williams and Bobby Doerr, served in World War II. Robert, or actually, Bobby Doerr. He was on the Red Sox from 1937 to 1951. Dwight Evans, he played for the Red Sox from 1972 to 1990. Boo Ferris, also known as David Meadow, <laughs> he played on the Red Sox from 1945 to 1950. Carlton Fisk, I definitely remember him pretty well. He hit that walk-off homer. He hit the the walk the 12th inning walk-off homer in Game Six of the 1976 World Series in the 12th inning. He was on the Red Sox from 1969 to 1980. Let's see James Fox. He was on the Red Sox from 1936 to 1942. William Lawrence Gardner. He played on the Red Sox from 1908 to 1917. Most of these players I'm in the Hall of Fame I'm familiar with. Some of them I'm not really. Speaking of Hall of Famers, David Ortiz is going to the Hall of Fame this summer. He got selected. James Gerald Gorman. Yeah, he was a manager for the Red Sox. From He was their manager from 1984 to 1993. He was the manager. I believe and he was definitely one of the greatest managers. And Terry Francona was another one of the greatest. So was Jimmy Collins, which we'll get to him eventually. Courtesy Gowdy. Robert oh, Lefty Grove, sorry. Lefty Grove was on the Red Sox from 1934 to 1941. John Leo Harrington, he played on the Red Sox from 1973 to 2001. Actually, he didn't play on the Red Sox. He was a treasurer. My bad. He was a treasurer. He didn't play on the Red Sox.
Terry Barthmello Hooper, which tragically he passed away during his career. He was on the Red Sox from 1909 to 1920. He won four World Series titles with them before getting an illness and he died. He's one of the three Red Sox players to die during their career. So is um, Chuck Stahl and Jake's, I don't know. I think Harry Hooper died during his career. I'm not sure. I don't know if he did. Oh, wait, never mind. That was Harry. I think that was Henry Agnes or something. I don't know. I got to Google I gotta Google search which Red Sox players died during their career. Because I, I don't know who, I don't remember who did. I know three died during their career. I got to Google search that. And I will let you know in the description before this video gets uploaded. So, yeah. And anyways, since we're at the 20 minute mark, or past the 20 minute mark, I will end my video right here. We will pick off where we left off in part 4 of this review, because, because this is such a big and long Red Sox yearbook. In fact, it's just as long as, it's just as big and long as the, two, the 2005, 2005 Red Sox yearbook. So yeah, which we'll do that for the next review, the 2005 one. And that's probably going to take me more, like, four or five or six parts, because it's going to be really long. So yeah, so anyways, I will end my video here. We'll pick up where we left off in part four, which is at the Hall of Fame section. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.